الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وأن سعد بن أبي وقاص رضي الله عنه قال رد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على أثمان بن مذعون التبتل ولو أذن له لاختصينا متفق عليه ودي ديسبكتد براذرز ألدرز لسنرز لاست ويك الحمد لله وي هاد ستارتد ذا توبيك اون كتاب النكاح ذا بوك اوف مانيج ان Alhamdulillah, in last week's dars, we covered a little about what nikah, marriage means, what is the conditions, and some advantages regarding uh, marrying, and also the opinions of the fuqaha regarding marriage. In some stages, it becomes compulsory. At some stage, it can become a sunnah. And some stage it can be disliked and makru, and in some stages it can be forbidden. And these all different situations that arise, and according to that, the fuqahas have mentioned about marriage. <clears throat> Now we come to the next point, which is regarding the most important thing, which is in the marriage, is ijab and qubul. which means the proposal and the acceptance and and the only way marriage will marriage will take place is through proposal and acceptance without this the marriage will not take place and also last week i mentioned many times especially our young brothers they always thinking to ask that you know what do i need to say what kalimas do i need to read and they would like to prepare themselves before this big day but it's simple so from one side is a proposal the other side is the acceptance in front of the witnesses and the nikah inshallah will be completed now regarding these words so either the woman or on behalf of her as usual it would be a guardian an attorney or we would say as a wakil so if it's the woman herself then she would say i have given myself in marriage to you <laughs> or her guardian would say that i have married the woman of such and such to you and then the man would reply and he would answer in a past tense so the words that would be used is that i have accepted in english as you would say and in urdu maine qubool kiya so it's simple so the words that should be in a past tense and apart from using the past tense also some kind of word which is related to nikah given yourself tazweej such words that are referring to nikah should also be used and if just barely they say we are husband and wife then this is this is not enough for the nikah to be done so the words how it's set out the propose and accept so usually what would happen in a nikah scene is where the imam would be there and then uh, the groom would be there and on behalf of the wife there would be a wakil her attorney her guardian and also this guardian would uh, usually 
It would be her father or her grandfather or her uncle. If one of them is not available, then it would be some uh, Muslim from the community. So this person, through her permission, she will uh, grant him permission that you will be there on behalf of me in proposing or in accepting. So with her permission, then this wakil would be present there. And the two witnesses that are there, they <coughs> generally, everyone that is in this nikah gathering, they are all witnesses. But usually two names that are mentioned on the paper. So these two witnesses, if they're present there to hear this permission, then it's better. Everything becomes more clear. And then we'll move on to the next part, inshallah, regarding the witnesses and their conditions. So this is usually what would happen, how the nikah would take place. First, the sunnah is the khutbah would be delivered. And in this khutbah, three verses of the Holy Quran, which are all related to taqwa, piety, where Allah warns that fear Allah. That this is a new thing that one is take a responsibility. So th the three verses that are recited in the khutbah are all related to that, all related to taqwa, piety, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being conscious. So fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the full definition of taqwa. It's just the meaning which is written in the dictionary. But taqwa itself means where one has the awareness and one is conscious at all times that Allah is watching me. So these are three verses of the Quran, then some ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are recited related to marriage from the books of hadith. And then the third stage is this proposal and acceptance, which takes place. And once this proposal and acceptance with the words that I've just mentioned, they take place that means the nikah now is completed and then a dua which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made uh, that Allah put barakah and blessings for the bride and groom and keep them together with goodness. This is a dua at the end that can be given which is a sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is how the nikah that would take place. Now we come to the point where do we go wrong in this and what happens? been to many nikahs there's too many things that can be said and too many things that need uh, that we need to reform and change ourselves firstly the this gathering itself of the khutbah and this proposal and acceptance is the most important part but this is a time where we see people are busy in chatting this is a time unfortunately people they still be playing music and won't even bother to turn the music down while this is taking place. So we have to request them that please turn the music off. And what this is one of the things. Number two, people are talking, chatting during this procedure where the khutbah is being given. It's clear and it's very clear if we look in the verse of the Quran وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Para number 9 Under this commentary the Mufassirin have written when there's hadith being recited when there's a khutbah of Jumu'ah when there's a khutbah of Eid, Eidain when there's a khutbah of Nikah also comes in this because it's the same thing it's advice, Quran and hadith which means that you must remain silent when this khutbah is taking place also. Where people are chatting, talking, they're more concerned about, you know, what food they're going to eat, or how the hall looks, or how who's dressed in what manner. This is what people are busy in doing. So this is another thing which we see a lot of the times where not much attention is given. So this is the part of proposal and accept that we've gone through. The next point is that they must hear each other. So in that nikah gathering, so that if it's the guardian, he should be sitting close. Thereafter, the groom is sitting close. The two witnesses that are there, 
this should be sitting close also so then it's clear that they've heard this proposal and they've heard this acceptance now we come on to the next point which is the witnesses the condition for nikah is two witnesses that this is a must without these two witnesses the nikah would not be done and either it has to be one man or either two women which are equivalent to one man or either it must be two men and the condition is that they must be Muslim and the condition is that they must be sane also so they can witness being a witness itself is a very important thing in Sharia because at times you will have to speak up and mention the truth if it comes to that so these uh, uh, witnesses must be Muslim uh, and if it's one man then it should be two ladies also or either two Muslim sane men there's no condition of them if they're practicing or not that the, the condition is that they must be Muslim even if they are not practicing or not pious is still there uh, them testifying to this being a witness will be accepted now it's not necessary sometimes you go for nikah some people think there has to be two from the girl side they have to be two from the boy side so there's not everyone is a witness that is there so there'll only be two that will be written on uh, the registry or on the nikah so it's not a condition two have to be from the girl two have to be from the boy it's simple that it should be two that is all and whichever two is written the names are written there in general everyone is a witness but they're just two that are written on paper so we've gone through and that could be the son it could be you know anyone that is close the, the family the only person it cannot be if is the guardian will not cannot be a witness also so if the guardians on behalf of the girl his daughter granddaughter he cannot be a witness now because he's on behalf of the girl and obviously neither can the groom be a witness it's just like a groom being a witness for himself which will not be acceptable so other than them anyone else that is there they will be accepted and they can be a witness to this now another point which is mahar sadly not much attention is paid to this now if we think so much money is spent extravagant on halls on food on clothing and many more but what happens mahar the amount which is a right that goes to the wife to be is something which should be fixed and sorted out from before and then the husband he will give it to her in his own time now what happens it's not fixed it's nothing is sorted out we've sorted all the other extra things which really don't matter in the long run but mahar is something which is important but not much most people won't even know anything about mahar uh, and before noting it down when you speak to them about mahar they're confused thinking what do we do how much do we give these are all things that should be done before and discussed from before and it's important that we have to learn about these things many times we don't know but these are important things just like we learn about worldly things and other things it's important so mahar is important that is selected from before how much and it does not some people think they have to give an ex, a large amount and then they can't afford it later they think okay just write it down there's no need to show what we can what is clear what the girl got what her mother got or what her auntie had received and was agreed according to one's means and the job that they have this that man and mahar can be given but if we are writing down such and such dollar of gold but we know we're not going to give it ahead it's just written on paper then that's wrong we should always be clear this is what we're going to give that's the aman if one is going to give that then we should give it a lot of people uh, we hear people that are in debt with the banks people are in debt with friends some people are in debt with their wife for 15 20 years they still don't pay the mahar and 
is is common where they won't they won't give it and they think make excuses make the wife feel guilty you know i've got so many payments and such and things such amounts because they write it down and they can't pay after they may write down six dollars or ten dollars of gold but they have no intention to give it and then they struggle after so what we can afford is simple write that down now the first hadith and then i'll finish the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed the youth not the middle age not the elders the youth so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ya ma'shar al-shabab abdullah ibn masud radiyallahu anhu narrated allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam a group of young people man istata'a minkum al-ba'a those of you who can bear the burden of a family should marry so that is part of the condition that you can bear the burden of looking after someone we can if you can bear that burden then marry and you are young then marry why falyatazawwaj then you should marry you've got a job you're young and you can't afford then you should marry why two things fa innahu aghaddu lil basar wa ahsanu lil faraj the reason is because it keeps the eyes down one is able to control the gaze and this is a very bad evil sin that has side effects after also if we don't control our gaze then we can't concentrate in the prayer we can't do any other ibadah so controlling the gaze by doing nikah it helps one to control the gaze and this is very important because this is a big sin and it affects shah hakim akhtasab rahimahullah a great scholar uh, mentioned this is like you're hurting yourself you're giving your heart pain what happens you cast a glance at a strange woman uh, in slang as we would say you know checking out checking them out now you've cast this glance is going to affect you after you go to lay down to go sleep is going to affect you you're playing solah will affect you also your mind wanders and it goes on to and you're thinking about this it that's why looking is also zina of the eye and it leads to zina so allah has not mentioned in the quran do not do zina allah has mentioned do not go close to zina what does it mean by going close to zina these are the things looking touching being alone where there's no one that these are all things that lead to zina so allah is saying wala taqrabu zina don't go close to it these are the things the means that lead towards zina so what the benefit is fa innahu aghaddu lil basar that it keeps the eyes down and also it preserves one from immorality it saves the most private part of the body which is important it saves a person from adultery from fornication from committing zina which is a big sin it ruins a society it affects others because of this how many fights that take place killing that takes place it messes a society up so sharia is very strict on this matter that for this do nikah and these are the two things which the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned wa man lam yastati whoever cannot bear this burden cannot take this responsibility then what should he do fa alayhi bi sawm now you have to fast fast until you get married because this is the only thing that will dry up the lust because allah has put it in us and there's nothing to be shy about some may have more some may have less it's nothing to do with shyness it's nothing to do with piety it's something which allah has put in us <coughs> and it's part of our nature so allah has put this inside us and allah has made only one way for it to be halal and that is through nikah so nikah is the only way anything apart from that then this will be haram May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand. Ameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.